everybody and welcome back to some more oxygen not included we're back it's cycle 88 and i think we might actually hit cycle 100 in today's episode which will be a nice little milestone for all of our duplicates to uh, to celebrate but what i want to work on in today's episode is a couple of things of course we're going to continue on digging down and trying to get um, as low as we can really in the world here uh, i did notice between episodes that we actually don't need to uh do this like we're going down and then going across and then going down again originally when this like area here was all grayed out i thought that the tile would continue on like around and we wouldn't be able to dig through it thankfully that's not the case we can actually just have a ladder go all the way down like this which i think is going to be significantly easier and then eventually we could also maybe dig out like next to this and have a fire pole so that getting down is ridiculously fast compared to the ladder at least um, and then they only have to worry about getting back up which does take them a while and uh, i think is one of the reasons why we've got such long commutes right now it just takes so long to get down to this area and then to climb all the way back up uh, into the base and so something we might want to work on uh, transit tubes in the future could make our lives a little easier on this front but to get transit tubes we do need large amounts of plastic and speaking of plastic that leads me nicely into one of the things that i would like to work on in today's episode and that is attempting uh, excuse me starvation these duplicates are starving and will die if they can't find food bert bert he has a full bladder and he's starving how are you starving bert what hold on let me check the schedule real quick so he's just past his downtime, which I assume is when he eats, and it's now his bedtime. I think Bert did just come up through the uh, the exosuit area, like through the gas tank and everything. I think what might be going on here is because the commute is so long from down here up to, you know, where people eat, I think he's not actually getting the time he needs to eat. So he's working all the way up to this point here, like right at the end of this uh, last orange tile. And then it takes him a whole two tiles worth of time to get back up to, you know, the food room, at which point it's time for bed. And so now he's gonna be late on sleep and then he's gonna have less sleep. He's gonna wake up feeling grouchy. And so it might not be a bad idea to give everybody a little bit of extra downtime. You'll see the downtime morale there does go up the more downtime that we give people. And especially as our duplicants become more skillful, we should definitely be keeping an eye on the morale and making sure that it is as high as it needs to be to stop them from getting stressed. And so one of the things that we can do to make sure that stress stays low and the morale stays high is give them a little bit of extra downtime like this. Um, of course, that does mean they're going to get less done in the day, but I think that's fine. And I was thinking between episodes, I probably do want to get an extra duplicate, maybe even two more duplicates, taking us up to eight in total, uh, because... As I mentioned, there's just so much to do in the base now. There's so many little things that need to be taken care of. Someone's got to look after the hatches. Someone's got to go and put coal in the coal generators. They've got to harvest all the mealwood. We've got to tune up the generators. We've got to clean out all the water. There's just so much stuff that needs doing. And with just six duplicates, I think we're kind of stretching what our duplicates can do in a day right now. And so um, whenever we get the option to take a new duplicate, uh, we'll take a look and, uh, and potentially get a new one. Apparently, by the way, we can't move this uh, Slickster Lava here. I was contemplating setting up um a little you know carbon dioxide room where we could put the slick to lava and have it just produce crude oil for us uh, you know if we did something like what we've done with this room where the door is just a little higher we could have for example if we move this door up we could just have the slick to lava on the floor here and just slowly but surely this room would just fill up with with crude oil and we can maybe put a pump there and start to pump that oil out but uh, apparently you can't just move the slickster you can't go ahead there's no wrangle button for the slickster lava for that i believe that you have to get a, um, a trap, one of these here, the critter trap. And for the critter trap, you need plastic. And plastic is one of those things that we do need. And so what I want to work on in today's episode is trying to get the beginnings of a Dreco farm. So by default, Drecos don't produce plastic. They produce a reed fiber, which is also useful. We can use it to make exosuits like we've been doing in the last episode. We can use it to make clothing. We can use it to make carpet, which increases decor, all that kind of good stuff. And Given that we've drastically reduced the size of our thimble reed farm, uh, being able to get a good source of reed fiber is going to be good for us anyway. But the long-term plan is that if you feed your Drekos mealwood, they have a chance, much like with the hatches turning into stone hatches, 
they have a chance to turn from normal Dracos into glossy Dracos. And if we go and click on one real quick, we can open up the database. So here are the Dracos. Here are the normal Dracos. You got the uh, the big boys and the the babies, which kind of look to me at least like they've got glasses on. I don't know if that's just me. These little like circles here look like they've got like little reading glasses at the foot of their nose there. But nevertheless, you'll see they can eat uh, pincher pepper, they can eat balm lily, and they can eat mealwood. They produce phosphorus, and then down here we've got the glossy Draco, which will produce um, the glossy eggs. Of course, they can eat mealwood and bristle blossom. Them. They produce phosphorite, but if you harvest them, if you shear them, they will give you plastic, which is super useful because normally the way that you get plastic is you have to go right down to the bottom of the world, get some crude oil, turn that crude oil into petroleum, and then use that petroleum in, I believe it's a polymer press, to actually get plastic, which is quite time-consuming. It uses a lot of power and is also quite difficult. I think the polymer press especially gets very hot very fast, and so it's kind of hard to deal with. We almost certainly will still do that at some point going forward because we're almost certainly not going to get all of the plastic that we need from Drekos, but for now at least, for kind of this mid-game point that we're at right now, we might be able to squeeze out a decent amount of plastic to be able to maybe replace some of these cots here with comfy beds to increase these, uh, make them into actual bedrooms, uh, maybe even start to make a couple of transit tubes to make, you know, transport around the base a little bit faster. Uh, I'm not quite sure just yet, but we can always give it a try. And even if we don't get a decent amount of plastic from the Drekos, we're still going to get reed fiber, which is always useful to us as well. So my original plan here was to build a room. I'm going to pause real quick so I do because don't try and build this. But my original plan was to build a room right about here. Something that looks a little bit like this. Now, I haven't counted the proportions here, so this is obviously, I think, a bit too big. But the general idea is that we're going to have a top section of the room like so, and then a bottom section of the room. And the reason we need two sections here is because of the way that the Drekos work. And I think I mentioned it a bit in a previous episode, but the Drekos can be sheared and they lose all of their wool, for lack of a better word. And then uh, they only regenerate that wool if they're completely submerged in hydrogen. So if this guy was sheared over time, his wool would regenerate. However, this one over... Here, if we sheared this Drekko, his wool would never regenerate because he has nowhere he can go to get access to hydrogen. So his wool would just always remain fully sheared. He would never regrow it back. And that's not what we want, of course. We want to be able to continually shear our Drekkos to get an endless supply of reed fiber and eventually an endless supply of plastic. Now, the downside and the reason why we have to have two sections here is that if we want to get glossy Drekkos, we have to feed our Drekkos mealwood. And unlike the... Uh, hatches over here the drekos will not eat pre-prepared food they won't eat mealwood if we put it down on the floor in front of them they will only eat mealwood directly like off of the plant they will just eat the whole plant of mealwood and then it will start growing again and so what we have to do is we have to have both drekos and mealwood in one room in the same stable unfortunately the mealwood cannot grow in hydrogen if you uh, click on this and we go to the database it requires an atmosphere of oxygen polluted oxygen or carbon dioxide and so we have to have a bit of a balancing act here where the bottom of the base is set up to grow mealwood so there's a little bit of either oxygen or carbon dioxide or polluted oxygen at the bottom available so that the mealwood can grow but then we want as much of the rest of the room to be hydrogen as possible so that as the drekos move around they spend a good amount of time in the hydrogen and thus over time can produce more wool that then can be sheared and turned into reed fiber or plastic etc etc so that's the plan, at least. You could set this up without the mealwood. Um, you can do, I think it's pincher peppers, these guys up here. You can set it up in such a way that you can get infinite reed fiber with just hydrogen. But if you ever want to move over to the glossy Drekos, which is really where the Drekos start to become super useful, you, uh, you have to do this kind of split hydrogen and, in our case, oxygen setup for, uh, for one given room. Now, this was originally my plan, to put it like right about here. Now... I then realized that this area is a little high up. It's not super hot here. Um, and the Drekos do actually prefer being a little bit on the warmer side. Again, if we look at the um, database here, the Drekos can live between 15 and 110 degrees Celsius, but they're most comfortable between 35 and 90. And so the, the further down we go here, the more comfortable they're going to be. But on top of that, I was thinking about ways that we're actually going to get the hydrogen and the oxygen into this room. Now, of course, we could just go and put gas pumps in every single one of these little hydrogen pockets and try and pump exclusively hydrogen into the top half and then oxygen into the bottom half. But um, I thought what might be an easier way of doing this, and we might be able to uh, kill two birds with one stone here and actually use up some of this polluted water as well, if we use the electrolyzer. The electrolyzer is something we have not 
unlocked yet. I think it's a little bit uh, further up here on the research tree. I'm maybe a little bit further down, actually, on the research tree. Let me see if I can find it. This guy right here, it converts water into oxygen and hydrogen, both of the things that we need in order to get this up and running. So I'm thinking, I'll select that. It's only a basic research. It should get done very, very quickly here. And if we seal off the two sections of this room, which of course are not going to look like this, please do not build this room but if we separate off the two sections of the room initially whilst we pump the gases in we should be able to get the bottom section filled with oxygen the top section hopefully filled with uh, hydrogen and then once it's all full we can turn the electrolyzer off and everything should be good the reason this links back into temperature is because the electrolyzer apparently pumps out gas at 70 degrees celsius and so when we convert the water into hydrogen and oxygen that hydrogen and oxygen is going to be very very hot and if we put it up here, it's going to maybe increase the temperature of the base around it a little bit, which is not great. You can see already Bert is uh, hungry and he's sleeping on the job. I assume he's sleeping on the job because of the fact that he didn't get any sleep or didn't get enough sleep because he was eating during his sleeping time. Again, we can always tweak the schedule if this becomes an issue. Hopefully it's not. Like, hopefully Bert, he is asleep right now and is just sleeping on the job. It's going to be his downtime in a minute. I, get, I bet he wakes up for the downtime. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> what a coincidence, Bert. Freaking... He sleeps right until, right up until it's downtime, and then all of a sudden he's good to go again. Uh, then again, he is also ill with slime lung, which, in fairness, is probably my bad. So I'll let you off this time, Bert. But uh, how are we doing on slime lung? It's not great. Also, I did notice this up here. We've got uh, some bristle blossom and then a bunch of um, floral scent, which I didn't know existed until recently. Uh, apparently, this is just another germ that is in the air. Uh, right now, floral scent is not too bad for us. I think we do have one duplicate with allergies i think that's mima i think she is allergic so if she comes into uh, contact with this she'll start sneezing and her stress will go up so we'll try and avoid that where uh, where possible but yeah i think i'm going to try doing that and i think i'm going to build it like right in the bottom left over here we're going to build it to the left of the uh, atmos suit area so that when our duplicates go to the Draco area they have the suit on that means they don't have to worry about being in that room full of hydrogen right they can pet the Dracos and shear the Dracos and do all that kind of stuff um, whilst not having to worry about not being able to breathe so and it also makes it easier with the water lock so we don't have to worry about um like hydrogen coming into the base or, or anything like that so my original reasoning for building it at the top here was that if we put for example a uh, a me mechanized airlock right here we should be fine like the hydrogen in the room would balance out with the hydrogen in here and no hydrogen would like come out or come in or no chlorine would end up in the room if we build it down here we're probably gonna have to have a, an airlock so that the chlorine doesn't end up in the um in the room there as well but that's probably fine so let me get the tile out here real quick and let me see how big i want this to be so we want the bottom section to be just too tall tall enough to grow the mealwood and we are going to go right at the bottom here so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen well something like this and then this section here is going to be the mealwood at the bottom and then above that is where we're going to have all of the hydrogen so something a little bit like this and eventually we'll delete these pieces here there will be a gap right there so they'll move around the top section but they will be able to get down under here and they can move along the roofs and whatnot you'll probably see them you know moving around all around the the world here they can travel along walls they can you know they're, they're not too affected by gravity and so what they will do is they'll kind of move around the outside of the edge and if they need to get food they'll come across around and down and they'll eat the meal wood and then they'll head back up hopefully to the hydrogen area uh, when needed so this is kind of the plan as i mentioned we probably are going to need some kind of airlock if we're going to make this work there's also the the fact that there's already chlorine here which is really kind of awkward so you know what I'm going to build it higher up, up here, and I'm going to really hope that the extremely hot gas is uh, not going to increase the temperature of the whole base. We could make it out of insulated tile if we're really worried about heat, like ex like heat moving to the rest of the base. And so you know what, sure, let's build it out of, uh, out of insulated tile just to be safe here. So again, we want it coming out like this. We want it going out by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I'm going to go like this and then four down, and then across, and then two down. And then this is gonna be farm tile eventually, so we don't actually have to put blocks there. Again, the temperature could kind of leak out of the bottom here, but I think that's fine. Like the lower area is already hot, so it's not gonna be too bad if uh, if that gets hotter than it is right now. Uh, we might also want to like replace this wall with a little bit of insulated tile. And so I'm gonna schedule a couple of tiles here just so that we can replace these with insulated tile without the hydrogen and chlorine moving in so let's go and see if we can get this done 
And uh, whilst they're working on that, we can work on a couple of other things around the base as well. So one of the things that I did mention in the last episode that I think I am going to work on is trying to set up automated lights. Lights that come on when our duplicates enter a certain room. And one thing that I actually didn't know about lights until I read the little description of the ceiling light here is that duplicants can operate buildings more quickly when there is light around it. There's a, a grammatical mistake here, but uh, nevertheless, essentially, if you have a light above a machine, like for example, if we had a uh, ceiling light right about here, any duplicate working on the research would complete that research faster because they can see what they're doing, which kind of makes sense, right? On top of that, light does increase the decor of an area. And thus, again, as we're always striving to do, it reduces stress, it increases morale, and everything is good. So I'm thinking of initially putting this in a few rooms. I want to have it in the lavatory. That's one of the places our duplicates spend a lot of time, uh, as well as the Great Hall. That's another place that our duplicates do spend a good deal of their time. And then finally, I want to have at least one above uh, these machines here, because uh, again, just having them here will um, will make this faster. These two rooms, they don't really operate any machines in here, so that's not going to be faster. That's mostly for the, uh, the decor. But this one, especially for the machines, and then potentially even this room down here, if we have lights that that come on when a duplicate comes in they'll be able to tune up the generator faster and it will ever so slightly offset the massive negative decor value in here it's not going to make it anywhere near you know a nice place to be but it should make it just a little bit nicer than it is right now so essentially what i'm thinking is we get a ceiling light and we throw one down probably right about here and also right about, let me see here, one, two, three, four. I do want to make these symmetrical where possible. So I'm thinking there and there. That does cover both sinks and all three lavatories. This one, I think, I guess can just go right here again. So it's in line, but it also covers both of those. And then over here, we might as well stick with the same layout. So we'll go four in. It does mean we have to get rid of this and one, two, three, four, this, which might look a little bit weird. I'm not too sure. I might get rid of this ceiling light if this looks really bad but I'm hoping this looks okay. And then we're gonna use the duplicate motion sensor to turn these on and off. Now, one thing that I did think about between episodes is that the duplicate motion sensor doesn't have a huge range and I don't really want to have, you know, two of these in every room like this. And so what I'm thinking is I'm thinking of having one of these right by the door and then under research, which we have now completed by the way, which is good. We have that electrolyzer ready to go. But down here, there is a buffer git which outputs a green signal if the input is receiving a green signal and continues sending a green signal for the amount of buffered time after the input receives a red signal. So essentially, it allows us to send a green signal and then continue sending a green signal for a set period of time, even when the detector goes off. So for example, we could put a little duplicate detector right here by the door. A duplicate will walk in, a green signal will be sent, these lights will come on, and then the buffer will make sure the lights stay on for five seconds, 10 seconds, half a cycle. I don't know how it's measured in the uh, in the game, but the lights will stay on for at least a little bit to make sure the lights don't go out while the duplicate, you know, is, is on the toilet or is washing their hands or is using the research station. Um, it's a little different for the research station. We might just have to have one here because we want this on all the time. Whereas this one, they only spend, you know, a little bit of time in here. And so having it on a timer, I think makes sense. It's a little bit overkill for saving 20 watts of power per room. But why not? You know, why not make our base as efficient as we uh, as we possibly can? So this does require uh, the actual refined copper. And so we might have to go ahead and make a little bit more of this. But I'm going to put one there. I'm also going to put one probably, yeah, here because we can't put it uh, on the roof. And I think right about here, we're going to have it like that. Maybe like this. Does that cover both of them here? I, I can't see because of the fact that the, you know, little box there is in the way. But that's going to cover... I think this will cover them. I think it'll detect if a duplicate's here. Like, it's, if it's between tiles. Hopefully that works. I really don't want to have two of these, if at all possible. But we'll set that up. Hopefully the research won't take too long. And then we can go ahead and connect all of those up with the uh, with the buffer gate. Uh, we do have to dig over to here, actually. I said we'll see if our duplicates can get this done. They're not going to get this done because there's nothing they can get done right now. So let's build some tile here so they can actually get over to this area. And then... Like I said, we're probably going to delete like these two. And I guess we can cancel this one. Uh, we're probably going to delete these two and have a mechanized airlock here. And then we do now have the electrolyzer. And for now, I'm thinking of putting this like just here. And we'll probably pump over the water coming from here. I don't know if this needs clean water or not. I have a feeling that if you pump polluted water into this, it might pump out polluted oxygen and hydrogen although i've not confirmed that that could be completely wrong um it might work just fine with polluted water but nevertheless we'll use this water that's coming here that should free up some more water here and thus allow us to turn this back on and uh, put more water into this uh, big old tank that we've got over here that is 
the plan at least. So the hydrogen is moving over, which is good. We might get a little bit of chlorine in here, which of course is not ideal, but we can always work with it if we do. If, if push comes to shove, we can always put a, um, a gas pump into here and try and circulate out that excess chlorine to try and make like a super you know, sealed hydrogen vacuum because we do want that, the Drekos to spend as much time as is humanly possible in contact with hydrogen. That's the plan at least. So much so that I, we might try and make it so that just the bottom layer here is oxygen. I don't know if the um, mealwood plants need oxygen in like both tiles. You know, they, they take up two tiles worth of height. I think they might just need oxygen in the bottom tile. So it's possible we could even make this layer hydrogen as well. But that's, you know, something we can work on after the fact. Um, guys, this is a problem. Uh, this is a real big problem. Please, priority nine, delete this. It's not a huge problem, actually. That's a lie. Please delete this. Uh, please fill in this hole, and please never come this way again. This is not the way you're supposed to come here. You're supposed to go through and wear the exosuit. Although, no, this is fine. They can still get out. They're going to have to go through the water, which is a problem. But I think it's better than them, that the hydrogen is, is escaping right now, which is not what we want, and eventually the chlorine might escape as well. So please build this, and then... Please leave and then come back with a, a suit on this time. Uh, we do have new skills available. Let's go ahead and select one of those. We're kind of still waiting on Bert here to get the mechatronics engineering so we can actually finally start to work with the conveyor rail and start to use the automated sweeper and all that good stuff. But for now, Hassan is the one with the skill point available. And I reckon we're probably going to give him maybe super hard digging. He does like that. And that is going to give him a morale bonus. Although I'm still quite tempted, as always, to give him improved construction. To make building faster? Yeah, let's go for that. Why not? And then also, I realized that uh, half of our duplicants are not wearing hats. That is unacceptable, especially given that Stinky has so many hats to choose from right now. So let's have a look here. What have we got? We've got Improved Construction 1, which is pretty neat. And uh, there's also the Exosuit Training 1, which I think looks real nice. So we'll go with that. Frankie, what has he got here? He has got Improved Construction 3. I like it. I also kind of like the idea of him wearing a chef's hat, but I feel like he does most of his work constructing so we'll go with that and then Bert down here at the bottom uh, can go with the electrical engineering just so they've all got a different hat and I can uh, more easily differentiate between them by the the hat that they wear and so this guy does of course require power so we'll get power going into our electrolyzer like so there must be a power wire somewhere there it is and then of course we need to put water into that so we'll go ahead and grab the liquid pipe and we'll have that go across like so and then does this just output the hydrogen into the world it looks like that might be the case it doesn't have a gas output and so what we might have to do here is we might have to build a little room around it and then have a gas pump in there that pumps the hydrogen and the oxygen down into here but i guess in that case we could just move the electrolyzer down into the room itself like there's no reason not to at that point so you know what yeah sure let's cancel that real quick let's deconstruct that machine that we've just built and let's get another electrolyzer going uh, inside of the actual room itself. I guess for now, like right about here. I think it is almost certainly going to produce more, more oxygen than hydrogen, or at the very least, an even amount of oxygen and hydrogen. And of course, this room does need more hydrogen than oxygen. And so I think what we might have to do is pump some of that oxygen out just so that we can get the uh, ratio of hydrogen to oxygen down correct. Also, we can get rid of this ladder now. This is not needed. We can dig this out here. We can leave this ladder going here. Uh, we can get rid of this tile. This is not needed. We can uh, fill that in and also, I guess, get rid of that one as well whilst we're at it. And then I do, of course, want the uh, airlock right about there. Might as well give it power just to make it a little bit faster. Uh, one of the reasons we're going to want to make it faster is, one, to stop the gases moving as much when the door is open, but also to try and stop Drekos getting out. There is a possibility that if this door takes too long to close, Drekos could escape. It's not a huge deal if they do. They end up in this area here, and we can always just wrangle them and stick them back in the room, but it's more work that our duplicants could do without. So let's go ahead and hook this guy up to power again. And of course, go ahead and hook that up with the water as well. And then after that, let's go take a quick look and see how our research is doing. So they're not doing any research just yet, um, which is because I didn't select the research because I'm a fool. But now they should go and select the research and eventually we can get these lights online. Uh, the printing pod is available, so it's time to pick a new duplicate. We've got Ren, we've got Banhi, and we've got Bubbles. All right, Bubbles has got medicine and science. Twinkle Toes, increased athletics. Uh, Tripophobia? Tripophobia? The duplicate's fear of holes makes it impossible for them to dig. Okay, that's not too bad, actually. The athletics is good, meaning they move faster. Medicine could be useful, and the science is definitely useful. 
These two are a bit more evened out. They got one in agriculture, strength, excavation, machinery, excavation, and agriculture. Iron gut means they're immune to food poisoning, which isn't a huge deal for us. We're not, we don't have a food poisoning issue right now, so that's fine. And then gastrophobia can't cook. Also not a problem, really. So could be. And then over here, we've got interior decor, increased creativity, and decreased decor morale bonus. So maintaining a high morale will allow the duplicate to learn more skills. Um, a decor morale bonus allows the duplicate to receive morale boosts from a lower decor value. So he is easier to please with the decor, and he can't do cooking errands. I think we might go with Bubbles here. She does have Binge Eater, which is not great. Uh, but food-wise, we're doing fine. We've got 111,000 kilocalories. Medicine and Science here could be useful. Uh, the biggest reason is honestly the athletics, especially as our base gets bigger. Being able to move around it faster is a huge plus. So you know what? Sure, Bubbles, welcome aboard. Welcome to the team. And given that she's now here, we should go ahead and build her a bedroom, I guess, as well. We'll do it up here with the uh, the rest of the bedrooms that does remind me as well actually one thing i did notice between episodes is that this plant has not grown and that is because this room over here is kind of uncomfortably hot 30 32 31 30 uh as is most of these rooms here they're a little bit warm which is why i built this new room on the left hand side here because this side is much much cooler 23 24 it's a lot cooler than the 30 on this side and so i might also maybe replace this with like a um a weasel what is that what it's called this guy down here the wart seed which should allow us to start cooling down this area a little bit hopefully it doesn't make it too cold but i think i'll give that a try we can always move it if it's uh, if it doesn't work out too well we do have a new skill available hopefully it's bert it's not it's bubbles of course we could send her down the research tree but i don't think that's too useful i'm kind of thinking of what we don't have other people doing right now I think we've kind of got somebody doing everything right now. I'm tempted to give her improved carrying. Again, just paired with the athletics. I think it's going to be a good uh, a good fit there so she can go and get stuff and bring it back much, much faster. We will continually sweep up the oil that we get here and I guess just store it for now for use later on down the line. I guess we do have, yeah, 549 grams, not even kilograms, grams, half a kilogram of, uh, of crude oil available to us. Not much uh, whatsoever, but not bad to have, I guess. So we'll try and get that room set up for her. Uh, ASAP. This room is coming along nicely, which is also good. They're getting the wiring and the plumbing built there, which is real nice. We've also got a nice separation here between the hydrogen and the uh, chlorine, which is all the way down here. This room is actually mostly polluted oxygen, which I'm very surprised at. I guess the chlorine has sank as we've dug out like new areas down here. That's fine, I guess. It's not a huge problem. Now that we've got this water lock here, I'm not too bothered about that. Uh, it does make this kind of useless, though. Like, we don't really need a big old tank full of polluted oxygen. We could clean this out, and it would be uh, it would be fine and usable. So we might end up moving and getting rid of this at some point in the future. Research is coming along nicely. This, of course, is still offline. This whole area over here is still a bit of a mess. Um, another thing I was looking at between episodes was the remaining room overlays that we do not yet have. Things like the rec room, I was looking at our water cooler i was kind of looking at this room and being like i don't love the way this room's laid out i'm not a huge fan of the fact that the fridge is all the way in the middle of the room here and if you hover over the water cooler on the right here you'll see it says outside of recreation room which prompted me to look at the room overlay here and there is indeed a section for recreation rooms so i'm thinking about maybe like repurposing this room here and making it into a rec room potentially putting in that jukebox we saw before you know, maybe putting in some other stuff in here to try and make it just a bit more of a casual room where our duplicates can spend their downtime. And then moving the fridge here over to uh, where the water cooler is right now, making the room look a little bit uh, a little bit nicer. Uh, we could also do with maybe putting down... We've only got five mess tables, which is an oversight. We should definitely have a couple more mess tables. We now have uh, seven duplicates. So let's go ahead and put another one like here and here. And you know what? I'll put one here. And then when this goes, we'll put one here as well, just so that we've got what it takes to accommodate... Uh, a couple of extra duplicates later on down the line, if and when we need it. So this is all hooked up now. Max gas pressure. Yes, there is way too much oxygen in this room. So we are going to have to have a gas pump in here just to move out some of that excess oxygen. So we'll throw it down right about... Ah, I guess we should put it low, right? C cancel that. And then ventilation, gas pump. We'll have it there. And then we're going to pump the gas from here down into here. There is a little bit of carbon dioxide in here. And by that, I mean quite a bit. And actually... I'm thinking we might just keep... How's the temperature doing here? It is a little hot. Yeah, it's quite hot. We might just use hydrogen and carbon dioxide. We could have done... The original plan, of course, was hydrogen and oxygen, but the carbon dioxide's already here. And so I'm kind of thinking that we just pump this oxygen out maybe into here. Like, if we just get rid of this, 
This is actually already quite full, right? Yeah, the density in here is already quite high. I don't want to pump it out up here because it's very hot. Uh, we could potentially use it for hooking up our machine here with O2. Like, I don't know if it matters the temperature at which we pump oxygen into our machines. By the way, people did also point out in the comment section that this setup should be self-regulatory. Like, it should turn itself off when it can no longer pump oxygen in. So, for example, when these are all full of oxygen and when the pressure over here hits 2,000 grams, the pipe will fill up with oxygen, at which point the gas pump should just turn itself off and stop using power. But I'm thinking, what if we just did something like this and had this kind of connect up like that? I think that might work. It's possible that the hot oxygen damages the exosuits if they're not able to take that, but we'll give it a try. It is also connected up here, so half of the oxygen will go out into this room, which is fine for now. It is going to heat up our room quite a bit, but I don't think there's a way that we can stop that. We could use insulated pipes here, these ones, but again, if we're pumping the gas out into the room, that's not going to make a difference, right? So we'll see how this turns out. We'll see how it goes. Uh, if temperature does become a problem, we can always try and, uh, like, if it gets too hot, we can always cancel this and, and maybe try something else. But it's very temporary. We only need to produce so much hydrogen, at which point we can uh, get rid of this whole gas pump setup. So we'll see what happens. We can always uh, keep an eye on it as things progress. The research has now been done, though, which is good. And so, wait, has the research been done? No, it's not. The research has not been done. Uh, but we should go ahead and hook up these guys with power, though. For now, they are going to be online all the time. That's fine. Uh, almost let that slide we need to delete a few of these so we can put down a filter right and i have a feeling the filter might not be able to go in the um in the floor here i might have to put the filter like on land and have the gas come like up and down again that's fine if that's the case that's not a huge deal and i guess ideally we do want to have you know what? actually i'll cancel that i'll move the deletion a little further over because really, if we're pumping the hydrogen back into the room, we want the hydrogen to be coming back in as far away from the gas pump as possible. In an ideal world, I guess we'd have... Uh, can we make that like a priority eight removal? I don't want the hydrogen getting pumped out here. But I guess in an ideal world, we should have had the gas pump like right in the corner and then the vent putting hydrogen back in the room in the opposite corner to uh, maximize the speed at which this works. But this is fine. It's going to get the job done eventually. Now the research is done. And so uh, if we go for the buffer gates, what we should be able to do, we'll start with the lavatory here, is rotate this because the input is on what is now the right. And if we put the gate there, we should then be able to have automation wire go from here to here and then from here to both here and here. And I think this setup should allow us to have automatic lights that turn off and turn back on whenever a duplicate is present. That's the idea, at least. And thankfully, these um, duplicate detectors don't work through walls either, and so they're not going to like accidentally detect a duplicate that walks on this uh, this tile here. So that's good. And look at that, it's off. So that ceiling light is now off. And I think... Well, let's check the, uh, the buffer, actually. We want to make sure the buffer is configured. Can I configure this? Here it is. So it's in seconds. I think we'll, we'll start with like 10 seconds and we'll see how that plays out. I have no idea how long they spend in here. And I've also no idea if 10 seconds is like real world seconds. If that's on, is that 10 seconds on speed one? I assume that's what that is. But we'll see how that works out. We'll see if someone goes in here and we'll kind of like see if the lights go off too early on and whatnot. It does mean the lights are going to come back on again when they leave, but I think that's fine. You know, they're not going to be on all the time. So I think that's okay. Uh, this is a very simple one because this is just like that. If there's a duplicate here, turn the light on. If not, turn the light off. And then over here, it's going to be the exact same setup as the lavatory. It's going to be a case of if there is... Oh, that's a complete mess. It's going to be a case of if there is a duplicate that walks through, go ahead and uh, turn that on. And we'll set the buffer so that it goes off when they're, when they're not in the room. And I think that's the best of both worlds. I think that's the best way for us to have lights on when they need to be on and not on when they don't need to be on. So I'm very happy about that. Let us go ahead and see about this gas filter here. Yes, you can't put it in the floor there, so it is going to have to go there. That is fine. So we're going to go like this and like this, and then we'll have this guy go kind of up like this into a gas vent, which is going to pump that hydrogen back into here. That is all good. I guess it's not too much of a, a big problem that they don't have O2 in the uh, exosuits right now because this area is uh, quite densely filled with oxygen and so it should be quite uh, quite breathable nonetheless. Although I do wonder if they can breathe the oxygen. I assume they can't breathe the oxygen in the air if, they, uh, if they're in the exosuit. Everyone is eating, which is good. I'm going to go ahead and deconstruct the water cooler. I don't think we need this here. 
We'll get rid of that. Uh, I'm also going to schedule a uh, deletion task here so they can actually build out the rest of this room, which I did realize also between episodes is uh, the incorrect size, as is the storage room above it. They need to be one tile wider, like this, to actually match with the, uh, the rest of the rooms here. So we'll do that, and that should work out okay. I wonder if they can't use the exosuit because it's got no O2, because it seems like there are not enough people going this way. Let me turn this back on real quick. Because I'm thinking that might be the reason why they're not uh, like there are not more people in here getting this done. It might be the case that you can only go in when there is gas in the uh, in the tank here. Let me set that to a, a high priority as well. We'll make that an eight, so they go turn that on right away. Bubbles has managed to find her way to her bed there, which is good. We'll give her a plant, and we did mention the uh, the weaswort over here. You can't plant a weaswort in that. Okay, so I think a weaswort might have to go in. A farm tile, maybe? Let me check that real quick. If I were to, for example, uproot one of these, could I then... Oh, never mind. I guess I can do it over here, right? Yeah, there it is. The wart seed. Okay, so I don't want that planting there, but I would like to plant that up here. I don't think they're going to get the same decor bonus for having that in there. I think the uh, the farm tiles might have a negative decor bonus, if anything. Oh, they're, they're decor neutral. Okay, so that's fine. All right, this is on. It does need power, of course, as always. Like so. Power's getting a little tight. I was thinking we might have to set up another coal generator. Maybe even two more coal generators. So we want hydrogen coming out back into the room. And oxygen going through to, uh, to everything else. Of course, we are going to have to build some ladders here. So our duplicates can actually get to uh, this new pipe that they have to build. Uh, let me quickly change my priority here. If you change the priority here, it changes it for everything that you build. I want it on like a, a 7. If I tell my duplicates to build something, I want it to be a slightly higher priority than everything else, but not, not super high. Okay, so I, I think that definitely was the case. I think the problem was that oxygen was not in the exosuits, which is why they couldn't do that. But yeah, I'm thinking of maybe just building another power plant opposite this one, or maybe even just having the second floor here be another power plant, uh, or maybe even beneath it have like a, a replicated setup. Um, I guess... From an efficiency standpoint, what we should maybe do is just move the storage bin and have a ladder that goes up or down to the next room. So we have to have two power control stations. We can still get the power plant buff without having to have, you know, two of these guys. I think that would make a lot of sense. Uh, but this is working. The oxygen is being pulled out of the room and is being sent this way. This one can't put it out, but this seems to be working just fine. I'm going to disable this building again because I don't want these to fill up with oxygen too quickly. I want this gas pump to fully enter this room of oxygen. I don't want it to get backed up in the pipes. This is working. The temperature is high. You can see here the temperature is uh, like 50 degrees Celsius in parts at least, like 30, 40, yeah, 50. Ah, it's getting a little hot. A little hot. And this room is also getting a little warm as well, but it seems not too bad. Like, if we look at the um, at the pipe here, the uh, the gas in there is about 40 degrees Celsius, so it's not getting over here at 70. Like, the gas that's coming out here is not 70, so this seems okay. I'm going to cancel that real quick because I do want all this oxygen to rise up. We do obviously want to have tile there eventually, but for now, I just want the hydrogen and uh, I want to get the gases sorted out first. Back over here, let's get that farm tile down and see if we can't uh, cool this room off a little bit. We'll see how that works out. Uh, we could also pick some more research here. I'm not quite sure what we're going to go for next. I guess for now we'll go for something like Renaissance art, just to give our duplicates something to do. I am very interested in this three-part monument. There's monument base, monument midsection, monument top. I am very interested in getting like a, a... I don't know how big that is. It sounds big, though, if it comes in three parts. But I'm very interested in getting like a monument to our duplicates somewhere in the base. I feel like that could be super cool. This seems to be working well, though. Like, it's moving the oxygen out fairly quickly. The oxygen is being used efficiently, um, albeit it's not going to this, uh, this third section here, which does surprise me a little bit, actually. I'm surprised that this doesn't split three ways at this intersection. I would have thought that one would go this way. That's uh, interesting. But you can see, slowly but surely, the hydrogen in here is... Uh, well, the room is filling up with hydrogen, which is always good. We should have some ladders up the left side so they can build this tile. And we should also go ahead and delete this tile for now, because I do want to replace this with the insulated tile, which is why we built this tile here in uh, in the first place. So we'll get them working on that as well. We can go ahead and... I guess there's no need to turn this off just yet. It'll turn itself off when it hits max gas pressure. So that is all fine. Let's go ahead and plant a Weezwort over here. There's no super big rush on that. But if they get that done, that would be grand. And hopefully now, we're seeing water move a little bit faster. I don't know how much water is being used for the um, electrolyzer here. 
It doesn't look like we're moving too much water. Like the little dots here are quite, quite small. But we are slowly but surely kind of working our way through this tank of polluted water. Not so much that we could turn that back on just yet, but we're getting there slowly but surely. And speaking of uh, earlier, I mentioned rooms that we don't yet have. Uh, I mentioned the rec room. Another thing that we don't have is a park or a nature reserve. And uh, the nature reserve especially caught my eye here because it says a nature reserve will grant higher morale bonuses to duplicants than a park. And the park here is just, you know, a place, a natural space uh, that the duplicants walk through. And as they walk through, they get a morale bonus. So, for example, if we had like a nature reserve, you know, I don't know, here, and the duplicants had to walk through it to get down to this work that they're doing, they would get a natural morale boost as they walked through that, uh, that nature reserve. And so what I'm thinking about is this section here. Uh, one of the key qualifiers of a nature reserve or of a park is that they have wild plants. The park needs at least two, and the nature reserve needs at least four wild plants, which is why this area here caught my eye. It's a nice little area we've already got. It's already got a bunch of wild plants in it. They are all kind of dead looking, which could be an issue. It's a bit hot in here. Um, I don't know if, if the plants have to be alive to get the bonus, uh, but we could always have like a little corridor here, a door, and then if we put a park sign in here, I think this might just become a nature reserve. And if we have our duplicates walk through it to get to this area, if we eventually, you know, dig out and start working over here, or maybe even to get to our algae distillers, we could uh, increase the morale quite significantly, I think, which would be pretty nice. We do also have access to another duplicate here. We've got Gossman, we've got Nicola, and we've got Rowan. Strength and creativity. Strength is quite good. Tiding speed and uh, carrying capacity are high. Early bird, this duplicate wakes up fresh and efficient, and then noodle arms, which decreases his strength. This is a, a bizarre combination. He's got plus seven strength, and then negative three strength. So he's actually got like four strength. What a bizarre set of, uh, set of traits. He also has tidying, so he's uh, interested in uh, sweeping, mopping, disinfecting, all that good stuff. I kind of like the look of Rowan here. He seems interesting. Uh, Athletics Twinkle Toes again is always good though. So Nicola could be an interesting pick here. Uh, cannot attack, which is fine. We haven't done much attacking at all. Digging and building are also definitely useful interests for us. And then uh, Gossman over here. I keep wanting to say Grossman, but uh, Gossman over here has Creativity, Diver's Lungs, which again is huge. Not using less air per day is, is real big. And again, that negative uh, strength debuff there as well. I think I'm going to go with Nicola. The excavation and construction is, is big. Like, we need people who can dig and who can build. And then having, again, the, the athletics is just so good. So you know what, Nicola? Welcome to the team. Our eighth duplicate is here. Skills available. I assume that's Nicola right out the gate. Um, I think we kind of just want to give him what he wants. Improved construction. Make him better at what he's already good at. I like it. Oh, gosh. Okay. So a little while later, I've just been kind of micromanaging this area down here. We have planted a buddy bud right next to Mima's room. And uh, she's allergic. So... Okay, I think I will do some cot reassigning here, if at all possible. I'm going to assign Mima to this cot, and then we'll move Bert over to this cot. That was my bad. I did not know that this plant would emit floral scent, which it has done. I think most duplicants actually might get a buff from floral scent, uh, but not the ones that are allergic to floral scent. They definitely do not get a buff when they're around that. Uh, so let's go ahead and finish this room off here. And I have noticed that there is a slight problem with our current design for our farm down here and that problem is that the temperature is too hot for the mealwood now it's only just too hot it's not it's 35 degrees celsius as opposed to uh, the 10 to 30 that they can grow in but that does make me think that we should probably uproot one of these and also uproot this uh weaswort over here and move it downstairs. It has done a pretty good job up here. You can see this room's getting uh, colder already, like 21, 20. It's no longer, you know, up at 32 like it was a second ago. Well, part of it is, but the place where they sleep is not quite as bad anymore. But I'm thinking we take that seed and we plant it down here to hopefully bring this lower section down in temperature a little bit over time. It might make the Drekos a little less uncomfortable, a little less comfortable even if it gets too cold. But in fairness, they can, they can live to like negative 90, was it? Something silly like that, so... I'm not too bothered if they're a little uncomfortable. I'm more so bothered if the uh, meal would just cannot grow. Okay, so it's now cycle 99, and I've kind of been just managing this little area over here for a little while, uh, whilst also taking care of some other things around the base. We finally got the new bedroom up and running. Uh, I have gone ahead and thrown down two more of these Atmos suit docks, and I've also made a few more Atmos suits as well, so that now um, much more of our duplicates can spend their time over working in this area if needs be. As you can see, they have done a bit more work here, which is good, uh, we actually have new skills available real quick. Let me go ahead and assign those. So we've got May, 
who I think we're just going to go with Improved Construction 2 for the time being. And then we've also got Bert, who finally is available to do mechatronics engineering. So now next episode, we can actually start working with our auto sweeper and, and automating stuff and, and whatnot. But you'll notice over here, this is now pretty much as we want it to be almost it's so close the only problem of course and it's a glaring problem is that the mule wood cannot grow because it is too freaking hot now we have got this wheeze wart here and i'm hoping it's going to make it colder i'm not convinced i'm going to go ahead and deconstruct these buildings now we don't need them anymore we can deconstruct pretty much all of those and we will speed up here a little bit and we can put in the machines that we need i'm thinking about ways we could possibly cool this down the wheeze wart will over time cool things down a little bit but i don't know if it's ever going to bring this area down below 30 that's quite an ask uh, what we could do is try and utilize cold water or cold, you know, polluted water called carbon dioxide. We could try potentially sealing this area off, pumping all of the gas that's in this bottom section out, so creating like a little vacuum, and then pumping in very cold carbon dioxide, you know, negative 20 degrees Celsius carbon dioxide. It's always going to heat up as it goes, but that should, as a whole, maybe bring the temperature of the room down, ideally. Let's go ahead and uh, get our stuff going in here, though. So we do need a grooming station in here somewhere. We also need a shearing station uh, in here somewhere as well. I guess we can put it right about there. Uh, on top of that, we also need a critter drop-off point. For now, we'll throw that down right about there. And I think that's pretty much everything we need. Again, we don't need the critter feeder because the food is already there. I'm not interested in an eighth duplicate just yet. However, I will. I, I, don't even want, I don't want the hatchling eggs at this point. We've got too many hatches already. And we don't want normal hatchling eggs. We want the stone hatchling eggs. So we can uh, say no to that quite confidently. But yeah, I think that is almost certainly going to have to be something that I work on in the next episode. Because I've been recording this one for way too long now. And we have uh, made some progress, which is good. We got our lights up and running. Uh, we do need to work on power very soon because power is uh, in a bit of a tricky space right now. A few times uh, between when I cut away and now, whilst I was working on this, power did cut out entirely. Uh, and if we look at our network, it is on the edge, especially with all of these new uh, exosuits here using 120 watts each. And uh, if we get the, the gas pump online, like all this stuff does use more power. So we desperately need more power coming from somewhere. Uh, for now, it's probably going to be more coal generators. But yeah, our big, this is almost there. We can now start going out and, uh, and wrangling Drekos. Oh, we did wrangle some Drekos. I have no idea where we put them, though. Like, we, there was one in here originally. I'm not quite sure where that's gone. But I think we will dig out and start trying to grab some Drekos next episode and stick them into this box here. Uh, real quick, I do want to see if getting a park going is as simple as just digging that out. Whereabouts is the, the park sign? Is it under furniture? I would assume it is, right? Park sign. If I just put a park sign in here... And presumably a door, you know, like right here. Does that make that into a uh, into a nature reserve? I would hope it does. And whilst we're at it, whilst we're working on rooms as well, we can also go ahead and make this into a uh, a rec room. Let's throw down a uh, a jukebox, right smack bang in the middle, or as in the middle as we can get for a room that's 15 tiles wide. As well as that water cooler that our duplicates have been missing. We'll stick that over in the corner there. Uh, I did move the fridge as well. I got all of the, the mess tables up and running. So this is now looking a lot nicer. I tweaked the timing on the, the buffer gate here. Uh, by default, it was way too short. I put it at, I think, 25 seconds now, as opposed to the default five. All right, did this work? It did. Look at that. We've got a nature reserve. That is bizarre, but also really cool. I like it. So I will try and set it up so that our duplicates do have to, uh, to pass through here to get to certain things going forward. We'll try and keep this as a nature reserve so that our duplicates can get that morale bonus from it. The jukebox does, of course, require a little bit of power, but they've made it 100 cycles. 960 watts of power. Excuse me? What? That's more than our coal generator produces to get this jukebox going. Oh my goodness. We'll turn it on. They made it 100 cycles. They deserve a little bit of music, right? But still, I... Uh, I, we were gonna have to unplug this. I'll just turn it off as soon as it's been turned on because we can uh, we cannot keep that going. So what I'll do is I'll just I want to see how this works, but I don't want to wait until the end of the next day here. So what we'll do is we'll we'll let them build this and then we'll just schedule a bunch of downtime so that hopefully we can uh, we can see them at work. Let's make this like oh it's already priority seven. All right, there we go. The work is complete. That is hooked up. So schedule and then downtime and then just give everybody a bunch of downtime. And let's go see if people uh, take advantage of the new jukebox. It does sit outside of recreation room. Um, 
I'm missing a decor item. Ah, okay. I didn't realize it did tell you what it was uh, what it was missing there. I probably could have used that before when I was trying to figure out why my uh, why my great hall wasn't working, which is no longer a great hall, by the way, because it's missing a recreational building. I didn't. I for some reason it slipped my mind. I thought it didn't need the rec building. I thought we put that in there because we were trying to get the uh, because we were trying to get the, the decor up. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and let's make this. Oh, look how happy! Look how happy Bubbles is right now. Oh my goodness! Let us try and make this real quick into a. Um, an actual rec room? It needs a decor item. Displays a single object, doubling its decor value. What can we put in here that's gonna make the decor good? I guess we'll put in like two sculptures, either side of the jukebox. Why not? Uh, somebody does have to be on, on work time to get this done. And uh, unfortunately, it's the people who have been up all night. Here you go, you guys are gonna, are gonna do some work here to hopefully get these statues going. Look at this. That was short-lived because the power's out. I mean, of course it is. They use a thousand watts to get this done. So I'm not surprised that the power just dies instantly as soon as they turn that thing on. That is actually madness. But whilst it's on, they have a whale of a time. They love it. Someone's a bit stressed, that being Mima, Probably because we've taken away her uh, rec time. But May is chiseling away. Any second now, this should become a rec room. It's already a rec room, but there we go. Look at that. A genius sculpt here. Our duplicates partying away. 100 cycles. Flip it egg. And with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's episode there. Next time, we'll come back. Uh, we'll see about maybe using the cool gas, cool water method to cool this off. Uh, we might also just move it up. You know, if we'd have built this a few tiles higher, maybe we wouldn't be having this problem. Although it's quite possible that we still would because maybe it's the hot hydrogen and oxygen that's causing this. Although the top section is not that hot, the top section is actually, you know, cool enough for this to work. I think it might just be because we've put it, you know, solo down. But we'll try and fix that. We'll try and get that working. We'll put some Dracos in there. We'll work on that. We'll continue digging down, you know, trying to actually get to, uh, to crude oil so we can actually make some uh, plastic a little bit easier. We'll try putting our duplicates in one of these. I've been told they get like skills or something for being put in here. So we can always go ahead and, uh, and try that. Still conscious about switching food sources. Uh, we're doing okay on dirt for now. So I'm not too worried, but eventually we do need to uh, to pivot away from that. Um, I did also start digging this out over here as well, now that all the water is uh, moved into here. So we can actually start building a corridor here and cleaning out the polluted oxygen and making this a little bit more livable. Potentially having our duplicates move through the nature reserve and whatnot. But for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's episode of Oxygen Not Included there. Real quick, just after I give... Ooh, that's a tough decision. Do I give him... He does have enough morale to do rocket piloting. I feel like rocket piloting is a little far away for us right now. We're not actually doing any rocketry just yet. So let's go with construction again. There we go. It's kind of the default go-to at this point. But for now, guys, as always, if you did enjoy the video, please hit like. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're new here to get notified as soon as new videos go out. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.